If you don't know, now you know. Quentin Tarantino is now in the publishing business, or is now in the author business, at least, with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. The drug uh, store... I, I butchered this. The drug store spinner rack mass market paperback right here is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. There's a deluxe edition, deluxe hardcover edition coming out later this year. So guess what, guys? We all got conned into buying this one. We all got conned into buying the single disc DVD when there's a special edition coming out, essentially. <laughs> but I digress. But anyway, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, it was one of my favorite films of 2019. Really loved it. Not only did I love the era... Uh, of Hollywood of 69, but I love the characters, Cliff Booth, Rick Dalton, uh, and I wanted to spend more time with them. What's up, Joe? I was gonna say Cliff Booth is my favorite Tarantino character. Like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood didn't make my top 10 list when I did make one that year. Uh, I liked it a lot, but Cliff Booth is my favorite uh, Tarantino character. I love that guy so much. And on that note, you should pick up this book because there are many chapters. I would re I would reckon to say seven of the 25 chapters in this book focus on cliff booth exclusively sweet and tarantino <laughs> knows that you're interested tarantino knows that you got enough of alcoholic rick dalton during the movie as much as he is in the book this book is very much dedicated in a lot of ways to the backstory of cliff booth which i'll talk about in a moment but the chance to spend more time with these characters was a must for me and i think a lot of other people um, now, this movie is not a direct novelization of the movie. That's the confusing thing. It's not a carbon copy, written out, narrativized version of the movie. It's, all, it's kind of like a remix of the movie in some ways. There's recognizable events from the movie that are transcribed in the book, but more time is devoted to the inner worlds of people like Charles Manson, um, and the sort of reach of his cult, which is fascinating stuff. Trudy Frazier, who is the little child actress in the movie that Rick Dalton has the heart to heart with on the side on the set of Lancer. And he delivers that great line when he starts crying, realizing that the book he's reading is about him. And she's like, why are you crying? And he goes, he, why? She's like, why are you crying? He goes, you don't understand when you're 15. <laughs> and, and Trudy Frazier is a huge part of this book. Um, and her acting career, Sharon Tate's private life. And I love Sharon Tate. The, I mean, the story of her is tragic, but she was a tremendous actress, really breaking into something when she sadly got killed. Um, but her life with Roman Polanski is is detailed excessively in this book. And again, as, as I mentioned to Joe, a lot of chapters in this book are dedicated to Cliff Booth. We get more context to the Bruce Lee brawl and what led up to that between him and him and Cliff. We also get an explanation of what happened to Cliff Booth's wife, and I'll say nothing more for the people who haven't read it. There is a chapter devoted to Cliff Booth's wife, and it's a great, great chapter. It's one of my top oh, five favorite chapters shit. in this book. I gotta read Joe's this book. To, Joe's about to cop this thing. <laughs> it sounds and like an easy read, it, or not like an easy read, but like a fast 400 read. 400 pages, I flew through it in three weeks. Three, four nice. weeks. I flew through it. This is a fast, deceptively fast read, despite how thick it looks. Um, it's also, too, worth noting it's third person present. So it reads in so many words. It reads a lot like a screenplay, sometimes more than prose, which I think is disappointing in a way because I was kind of hoping Tarantino had more of an author voice. But, I mean, I guess I shouldn't be too surprised. Having seen every Tarantino movie, the guy is who he is. So it's not the most surprising that this thing reads very much like a Tarantino screenplay if you've read those. But... It's also expository. One of the big complaints I have about this book is that it's expository to a damn fault. Um, th th this is one of those books that like Tarantino keeps interrupting himself. Like you'll get three lines of dialogue, then you'll get, and then somebody will mention a movie that uh. Rick Dalton did. <laughs> then you need five paragraphs talking about what, what the actors ate on the set of that movie. Then it goes back to the conversation at hand. By that point, you almost forgot what the hell you were in the middle of. Then you get a couple more lines of dialogue. Then somebody like James Stacy walks in and then it's like, well, Stacy's acting career started back in the forties. And it's like, you know, like there's a time for this. Like if you took out the experience, the expository text of this book, you're probably, this is a 400 pages exactly. If you took out the expository text of this book, you're probably left with, I would say, maybe 180, 190 pages. Because oh, wow. a lot of this movie, or a lot of this book is contextualization. And a lot of it is good. A lot of it's rich. There's like half a chapter dedicated to the radio station in LA, which you can imagine I loved. Um, but he could have, he could have summed up 
in five pages sometimes what he sums up in 15. The worst chapter in this book, in my opinion, is Lancer. That is the show that Rick Dalton is guest starring on. And my God, that chapter goes on. That chapter, it, it took me two days to read. That chapter is 18 pages, and it basically gives you the oral history of the Western program Lancer that aired in the 60s. It basically gives you the oral history and all the characters and the subplots and the side shots and the guest actors. And it's like, let me tell you, I didn't even like Bonanza. I don't give a shit. You're mistaking me for someone who gives a shit over here. Like I was, I was chugging along and then I hit that Lancer chapter. And then that was gotta be the worst chapter in this book. Some people are going to like it, but it's one of those things that I, I, I thought it was way, 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 way too much, too much needless information that doesn't come back into play. At least when he's describing like the radio station or he's describing the theaters of LA, they come back at central points in the book. The Lancer thing is just the backdrop and we get mm. 18 pages dedicated to it. Characters we don't even meet and know and who's sleeping with who and who wants who dead. It's immersion, like, Steve, immersion. I was immersed up until then, man. Then I was alienated. Gotcha. Um, but but the, the other thing too, like it honestly made me hope the book on Dalton's films and career, because that's happening. I don't know if you heard that. He's making, uh, really? Tarantino's allegedly making a book about the films of Rick Dalton. And we're getting uh, the spin honestly, show, too, of the actual uh, Western show. That Bounty Law. Up. Yeah. Bounty Law. Um, it made me excited. I hope that book on Rick Dalton's movies, fictional movies, comes to fruition, because I would read that, uh, especially if it kind of reads like this. Um, and lastly, though, I'll say this. Tarantino's appreciation for cinema has never been questioned. You watch all his movies, you know that. <laughs> um, and he elaborates on sort of this, like, what, what, what this amounts to is like this sunny piece of Hollywood fan fiction. That's really what this is at the end of the day. Um, he, and he's created this and he recognizes as America, we really don't have mythology like the Greeks. We don't have ancient folklore like the Chinese. What we have instead is pop culture. And that's what this book is rich with, is pop culture and references and the 60s. And I mean, you could take a shot, besides the references to feet, you could take a shot for every time somebody says a derogatory word about hippies in this <laughs> thing too. Um, and, I, and, and the other thing too, I'll say, what a great, sweet ending. And I'll leave it at that. Just And I'm not talking about sweet like in cool. I mean, just a sweet slightly sentimental very nice positive ending i would give it i've never reviewed a book before so this is why i suck at it if you're wondering if you've gotten this far three out of four stars and i would also add my favorite chapters i can't think of the chapter about cliff booth and bruce lee i can't think of the title of that one but or the title of that chapter but i would say my two favorite chapters i've mentioned on the show before is pussycats creepy crawl that's got to be my favorite that was awesome and the other one is the spawn ranch which is basically like an abridged version of what happens in the movie but it gives more detail to a few things and you also get that extended sort of written out scene with cliff booth picking up the hitchhiker i would give this three out of four stars if you like the movie and like the characters enough i think this is a good read and again it's 400 pages it's a deceptively fast read and it's super cheap on Amazon. Go pick up Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Joe, with the last word. I, I was going to ask, uh, so does the ending go past what you've seen in the film? Yes. Oh, okay. The ending of the movie. The book essentially takes place over the course of two days. Okay. Essentially. It's kind of hard to follow the timeline because it jumps around, but it, it, it's two days. The... What happened at the end of the movie, and the only reason I'm not going to spoil it is because Dom, I want Dom to watch it. Yeah. What happened at the end of the movie is mentioned and detailed. It's not played out. It's not written out, but it's mentioned about 100 pages in. And this kind of deals with the aftermath of what happened there insofar that it catapulted. Rick Dalton got kind of a career revival from the ending okay. and that's the cool part about it and keep in mind too sharon tate's saga and everything ties really beautifully into this uh 
book. You can almost picture Margot Robbie too in this. I love in this, in, in the book, she talks about how like when she argues with Roman Polanski, her husband in the, in the, in the movie or in real life and in the book and everything, she always says, she always says, you just want me to show up at your parties and me put on my sexy little me outfit. She <laughs> says that like 14 times and she's not wrong. She was a bombshell actress at the time, but it's kind of funny. Like she's very cognizant. He like Tarantino can get crap for writing women. He wrote Sharon Tate in the movie and in the book very admirably as more than just a lollipop blonde. Like, and, and, and I really love that as somebody who really likes Sharon Tate, I, I found her even more fascinating with this book, but go pick this thing up. I, like I said, I think I got this for less than $10, even with shipping. Like it, it's, it's mass market paperback for a reason. It's cheap as hell. Uh, pick it up. Uh, it, it's definitely worth reading. It's a really nice summer read.